Okay, well, it's good to be back in Milwaukee. We had a wonderful evening last night. Uh, people are enthusiastic, and the road to the White House definitely runs through Milwaukee, and I'm honored to have the support of people here. I'm going to continue to remind people, go to IWillVote.com to know where you vote and, um, and how you can vote in terms of in person and all of those other details that are very important to exercising the power of your vote in this very critical and important election. I also want to speak to the comments that have been recently made by the Speaker of the House. Uh, it is just further um, evidence of everything that I've actually been talking about for months now about Trump's intention to implement Project 2025. We have talked repeatedly, and the American people know what's in it. We've talked repeatedly about their intention to get rid of the Affordable Care Act, now to get rid of the CHIPS Act. And let's talk about manufacturing, which is a critical issue for many of the states that will make the difference in this election. Donald Trump, when he was president, lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs. We have created over 700 new manufacturing jobs. It is my plan and intention to continue to invest in American manufacturing, the work being done by American workers, upholding and lifting up good union jobs, which are good paying jobs, and doing the work of investing in American industries, including our industries of the future. That is the way we are going to win the competition with China for the 21st century, and that is the kind of leadership that America deserves in their president. Madam President, tomorrow, Madam President, oh, sorry. Um, what's your message to Milwaukee voters who are saying, you know, Trump might be better for the economy? We're hearing that from including black men, um, voters who are skeptical that things are just too expensive for them. Well, first of all, let me make it very clear that I intend to earn the vote of everyone, and I don't take anyone's vote for granted. And my highest priority as president will be to bring down the cost, because to that point, look, I know the cost of groceries is too high still. Everyone knows it. And so my plan includes what we're going to do in terms of taking on corporate price gouging and having the first ever national ban on corporate price gouging on groceries. My plan includes addressing the issue of affordable housing, including for first time home buyers, giving them a $25,000 down payment assistance so they can just get their foot in the door. My plan includes addressing the needs of parents, in particular young parents, which is why I will expand the child tax credit to $6,000 for the first year of their child's life, which helps pay for everything from childcare to a crib and a car seat. My plan includes what we're going to do to invest in our small businesses, including increasing tax breaks for small businesses. And overall, my plan, which is about building an opportunity economy, has been reviewed by leading economists in our country from Goldman Sachs to 32 Nobel laureates, all whom have said that my economic plan actually will strengthen America's economy. They've reviewed Donald Trump's plan and have determined he will weaken America's economy, he will ignite inflation, and he will bring on a recession by the middle of next year. Okay, well, hi, Madam President. On the comments from the speaker, he walked back initially saying that they would repeal the CHIPS Act, but he still wants to impose changes to the bill. Are you concerned about Republicans seeking any changes to the CHIPS Act? Well, let's be clear why he walked it back, because it's not popular. And their agenda is not popular. And that's why people are showing up by the thousands, tens of thousands, to talk about an agenda that actually is focused on lifting them up. That's why I have the support of, yes, Democrats and independents and Republicans, because they want a president of the United States who stops playing politics with their lives. They want a president of the United States who invest in affordable health care, regardless of who they vote for. They want a president of the United States who invests in American manufacturing and American workers. And that's the work I will do. And that is the work I'm committed to do. And I'm very proud to have the support of many leaders from every party who understand that that's the kind of leadership that we need moving forward. Thank you. Madam Vice President, uh, I wanted to ask you about your day one agenda. I know you said the other day you talked about um, having an executive order that would eliminate college degrees for certain federal jobs. Yes. Can you tell us about some other day one priorities? Absolutely. Well, it, obviously there's more problem. than one, yes. and one of them is going to be to submit basically a package of proposals that are about bringing down costs. So, for example, housing, what we need to do in terms of creating a tax benefit for folks 
who want home ownership, what we're going to do to create a $25,000 down payment assistance plan, what we're going to do for small businesses. All of that will require a lot of work. And day one is also me getting on the phone with members of the Republican Party, with leaders, with the private sector. A lot of my plan includes working with the private sector. My plan includes cutting through red tape on the issue of housing again. That includes working with local and state leaders to cut through the red tape, as well as creating incentives for the private sector, builders and developers to actually build new housing so we can increase supply and bring down the cost. Charles. Madam President, thank you for Vice making President. this. Three days. Vice President. Well, I appreciate yes, I, that. That will go viral, yeah. I'm sure. Um, tomorrow, faith leaders in Milwaukee and across the state will be praying about this election yeah. and encouraging people to get out and vote. Yes. I think last week I heard you say God's power works through us. Yes. What does your faith tell you about who God wants to win this election and lead our divided country? My faith and my belief in God tells me that we all must think about our lives through our ability to do good works and through those works to lift people up, to help the needy, to help the poor, to help the elderly. And my plan for my presidency is informed with that spirit and that approach. And I do believe that people understand that that really is the sign of a real leader, which is not defining one's strength based on who you beat down, but defining the strength of a leader based on who you lift up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.